Is this cave new to you? Because it's new to me. And I see a few other scenes in here that have all dropped within the HDRP water samples that I had to cover. So uh, probably up to a year ago, I covered three of these and they've since added another three, four, five of them. Uh, I can't believe this isn't a bigger announcement that these have all been added. Each one has its own piece that you're going to want to take, pick apart, and potentially use in your own project. If you can, please take the time to subscribe to this channel. After you do that, if you comment below, I will be sure to personally respond to you. Let's go ahead and open the window, go into Package Management, Package Manager. You do need to be in an HDRP project. I am also in the Unity 6.2 beta, but presumably that is not necessary to leverage this. Inside of the project, we have High Definition Render Pipeline. We're going to go over into Samples. Keep in mind, I'm in 17.2 for the HDRP package, which is recent. And then we come down into Water Samples. Make sure that you import that sample. And once it has imported, you're going to have a bunch of things down here underneath Water Samples, including prefabs, scripts, scenes, textures, visual effects. Uh, I love the amount of content that's coming into this. So let's go ahead and look at our very first scene and then we'll walk through each of them. I intend to not spend more than a minute or two per scene. So in this one, the very first thing that I'll mention once you have all of this open is that you're going to have a series of items over on the right hand side, especially if you have the water object selected that are going to say, wait a minute, you don't have screen space reflections. You don't have water rendering turned on. You don't have this turned on. Effectively, you go through and click each of those buttons, and every time that you click it, it's going to automatically open up your project settings and highlight the object that you need to turn on. Um, so just rendering water and transparency, you'll click that button, it'll open project settings, look at what's being highlighted, and then go there and enable that. Once you've gone through and clicked each button and enabled each piece, it will then show you the rest of the water surface, and you can start to get in here and play with it. The two main things that I love about this cave scene are the volumetric fog. So we come over here and you can turn that on and off and see what that's actually doing. I also love this custom pass triplanar caustic projection inside. So if you look um, even, let's see if I can do this in a way that makes it more obvious. If I turn off the exposure, you can see the caustics that are being projected onto the surfaces. Hopefully that comes through in the video recording. Um, but that is a triplanar caustic volume custom pass here. So I would love to get in here and pick this apart. It also has the shader that comes with that I could open up and look at in shader graph. I'm going to turn those caustics back on. The last thing that I would encourage for you to look at in here would be the volume. So just jump through here and see what happens when you turn on and off the sky, the water, color adjustments. These are the steps that it takes to get something that looks polished. So get in here, check it out. I also really like that there's an easy drop here. It's not necessarily a particle system, but instead it's just a very basic mesh renderer on a sphere with a drop manager script. And that gives you a nice little bit of life here as that drop falls down and creates that nice ripple. So let's move on to the next one. That's the cave. Here's the current with splines. So this one is really interesting. And once you open it up, you're going to see this is similar to one that I covered in my last video on water, except this one has all of the debugging features and allows you to control the current with splines. So what you want to do as a more or less a first step is go into the spline container. When you first open up that spline container, uh, you're not going to see anything in there. There might even be an error. What you need to do is check and install the spline package. Uh, I noticed that the first time I did it just for troubleshooting, it didn't seem like it actually brought the spline package in. So then I just did a quick save current map, save height map, apply transform to see if any of those would snap it all together. It didn't work. So I then checked and installed the spline package again and that seemed to actually pop it through and start with the, the color gradient that I'm seeing. Uh, let me know if you don't see that in the comments below and we will check it out together. So once you have the splines enabled, you can then get into the splines by selecting this spline container object and coming up here to the contextual menu. 
where you can then begin to grab each of the individual spline pieces and start to move what this coordinate is going to look like and how the and how the current is actually going to flow around these edges. So this is a really cool way to get in here and start to see how you can control the currents using this spline tool. If you do want to get back out here and just see what the water is going to look like, you can always come back out into river, open up the miscellaneous area at the bottom, and change the debug mode from current to none. And now we're going to see what all of this looks like together. You can still make the changes, even with the debug mode turned off. But I think that this is really a cool scene to start seeing how you can control your currents. So moving through this and keeping with some of the newer ones that we have not covered yet, I want to go into rain. So this scene uses a custom render texture, and I think just getting into this and starting to play around with it, all of these scenes have this underwater kind of fog mist, but the raindrops up here really being what adds life to it. If I go into the ocean itself, and start to play around with different pieces of it, such as the color, the scattering. We can start to see how all of this is going to play. So if we want to be real creepy, can do stuff like that. And you can get in here and really start to play around with it. Within the volume, again, we have these really helpful settings that you can get in and pull apart. And with all of these, if you want to learn more about the system that you're looking at, you can come over here and start to read about what is happening. So the texture is updated in real time with the droplets shader graph. So if I click on that, it's actually going to open up the droplet shader graph that we're showing here and show how that is being applied. So if I come over to this custom render texture, it also shows me the custom render texture that's being used. It's really fantastic. Um, so get in here and pull it apart and try to understand how this is working with Shader Graph and with that custom render texture. The next one that we have, the rolling wave. So in the rolling wave, there's also going to be a setting or two that you have to enable over here. Um, just make sure that you, again, follow the prompts, turn on what it asks you to turn on. I believe in this one, I also had to go into the volume profile and add an override for water rendering, as by default, it just kind of looked like this. Once I turned on water rendering, then we had something that looks a bit more compelling with a rolling wave and trying to understand how this is going to work. If you want to accomplish this sort of visual, it's a really nice way to get in here and start to see how this can be accomplished easily within Unity. Grab this system and use it in your scene as well. Underwater is one of the last new ones that will be familiar with y'all if you follow this channel. I use this in a procedurally animated fish swimming school that kind of all swam out from a central orb that was controlled. So I used a combination of VFX graph and shader graph to have fish swimming around together in here. You can also see there's a lot of VFX happening. We have bubbles, algae, grain. We have, they even have their own fake school of fish over here. So if you wanted to pull this apart and try to find out how they've done this themselves, you can always open up that system and start to take a look in here and see what they've done. So this would be a really good one to come in and look at VFX graph. I also just really like the effects that they're getting in here, the kind of God rays coming through, the water effect on the camera as you're coming up above the water line, as well as many other pieces of this. So I just think this one is fantastic. The last thing that I want to cover are the, the previous ones that I have covered previously, just to make sure that we don't leave those out. This is that glacier scene, but this one actually has some pieces of ice that are floating down through the currents and will be falling off with this uh, little fall that we have over here. And then we can see them move out into the ocean. We have the island, which has all of those little ducks that sit around it that, that are pretty fun. 
And this gives a really good example of how to make buoyancy work and how to have something work here that will allow a large group of objects to just kind of hang out and float within a box or an area. This one also, I really like the example of the occluder. So if you click on this, you have a water excluder renderer, meaning that this piece will make it so that water doesn't render inside of things. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how that works. All of these are samples. Get in here and pull them apart. But that's the sort of thing that I would want to use in my own project for sure. And I don't need to go and write anything myself. The last one that we've got is the pool. And this is that tried and true where when you hit play, the balls will start bouncing and floating in, in the water. So as I keep hitting space, you're going to see the particle effects that are happening when the balls hit the water and each of them are floating and rotating of their own control. So this is really a great scene as well if you're looking to do anything that has a, a simulated amount of weight that is behaving in a certain way on top of a pool. This also is a really nice way to look at how to keep everything within a certain mesh or a certain shape and ensuring that it all still fits using the new HDRP water system. I hope that this video has been helpful. I love getting in here and seeing the new samples. I feel like they're not talked about enough. In each of these scenes, I see something that I can use in my own projects. I hope you can too. I hope y'all are having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.